to introduce you Eric Grusson from Kaveret Prasad. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Jan Bondrash for arranging this lecture. Uh, uh, Jan Bondrash worked in the same company in the local branch and we, we cooperated with him in his previous job. It was a lot about uh, intellectual property and he was giving to us contracts uh, as a founding uh, director of the recent Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, everyone, to, to be here uh, for these lectures uh, regarding uh, IP protection of the software. Um, mostly, um, first, to, to present myself, my name is Eric Gruson. Um, I work in Cabinet Plasro for almost six years, seven years now. Um, and uh, I am a European patent attorney and a French patent attorney. Uh, here we will mostly discuss uh, the approach in Europe uh, regarding the IP protection for software and uh, a quick uh, view, uh, overview of the, uh, the approach in the US because it's always interesting to, to know how it works uh, abroad uh, in all parts of the world. First, um, just um, a reminder uh, of what is intellectual property. Uh, I always start with such an introduction because I believe that uh, if we do not in, uh, understand this, uh, this introduction, we miss a, a great part in, in uh, the intellectual property. The intellectual property is named property, but it's not. Uh, it's not a property. Uh, we used to, 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 to name it like that, but it's only a right to prevent. It's not a right to, to, to do, uh, it's only a right. You can provide someone to do something, for instance with a patent or with a copyright uh, uh, law, but you, you are not uh, granted a right to operate something. For instance, if you have a patent on a bottle, the, the, for instance, uh, the, the way you, you form the bottle, uh, there is no way you, you have assurance that you can do it because other people can have another patent more precise or more broad that forbid you to, to do it. Then um, it's, it's always to, to, you have to keep in mind that if we are talking about property, uh, we are only talking about a right to prevent. And if it's clear, um, we, we, uh, there is no problem with that. Uh, in addition, the intellectual property is not only one-sided. Um, for instance, um, I have made a slide here with these uh, watches, uh, which is uh, uh, the watches of uh, clients of uh, our company. And uh, on these watches, on this watch, uh, we have a brand, which is the name of the, uh, of the watch. We have a patent on the way the watch works. We have also a design. As a matter of fact, probably they, they may have also a copyright, uh, copyright, copyright right on this, uh, on, this, uh, on, this, uh, on this watch, but there is no title. It's just uh, a, a right. Then you can see that for one product, you can have multiple uh, solutions to protect your IP. Then keep in mind that we are not talking only about patents, we are talking about all the, fa the face of uh, the intellectual property. Um, now we are looking, um, the, the core of this lecture is software. And uh, we will see that there is a plurality of rights that can be uh, uh, applied to software. Then uh, the first question is, what is um, a software? What is um, a computer implemented invention? We, we say computer implemented invention because in the, uh, in the Europe, uh, 
the, 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 the name of the, these inventions are named like that. Uh, we know that, for instance, we have pure software, uh, image, image analysis, for instance. But uh, actually, multiple uh, fields uh, of, uh, of, uh, of industry have uh, computers inside. For instance, you have in mechanics, if you want look to, to a car, uh, there is everything is, is, is computer implemented invention. Uh, the brake control, uh, the navigation system, uh, the way uh, the wheel works, uh, everything is controlled by computers. In electronics, you have ASIC, FPGA. Um, in cryptography, uh, you have multiple invention in cryptography. Uh, all over the, the industrial controls, you, you have uh, computer implemented invention. Then when we look at software, uh, actually we are looking to every piece of industry because we have codes uh, everywhere. Then these examples are just examples because we, 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 we can deal with a lot of things. Uh, first, uh, there is um, one uh, important thing to know about uh, software it, that it can be protected by copyrights. Uh, why I begin with this? Because it's the usual way software computers, uh, software uh, are protected. In, uh, in the earlies, uh, the Bern Convention uh, provide that every litera uh, literary and artistic works are protected all over the world, except some countries, but most of the, in the world, by copyright, by the copyright protection. Then a, a bunch of, uh, a lot of countries say, okay, if we are dealing with um, with uh, uh, with a, um, a liter literary uh, work, um, for, in for instance Shakespeare, okay, we all agree that there is a copyright on this, and if there is a copyright in my country, it should be recognized in the other one. Then the Bern Convention just implemented this. Uh, it's uh, in uh, the eight, uh, 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 18th, uh, then uh, it's a very long, uh, long time ago. In Europe, uh, the Council Directive, which has been renamed because it's only uh, last 10, uh, 10 years, um, has been uh, provide the legal protection of the computer program. And as we will see, it is based on the Bern Convention. It refers to the, the Bern Convention in order to provide a specific protection to the software. The Council Directive Article 1 says that member states shall protect computer program by copyright as literary works within the meaning of the Bern Convention for the protection of literary and artistic works. Then when we look to a computer program, actually we look at like um, a poem, something like that. Uh, it's uh, a set of um, layers uh, and it's like a Shakespeare and it should be co uh, protected by copyright. This is exactly what uh, the article one. Protection shall apply to the expression in any form of the computer program. And the third paragraph say, a computer program shall be protected if it's original in the sense that it is the author's own intellectual creation. No other criteria should, apply, should be applied to determine its eligibility uh, for protection. This article raised some questions. Um, actually, at least two, uh, probably more, but at least two, uh, in any form of a computer program. Okay, we, know, we understand that the, court, the source code uh, should be protected as um, by copyright. Okay, it's quite understandable 
re regarding the, uh, the par paragraph one, because the, the person wanted to protect uh, the, the work of the people. The wording of the paragraph two says also that uh, the protection shall apply probably to the ex executable files. It's quite difficult to understand, honestly, because uh, even if it's uh, derivable from the source code, uh, it has been changed by a compilator, for instance. And uh, the third um, paragraph say, in the sense that it's the author's own intellectual creation. It's difficult to understand how um, an executable file, which has been computed by a program, by another program, uh, is the author in intellectual creation. Then, when we see in any form of a computer program, uh, most of the people understand the executable file, but it could be arguable. To be honest, uh, most of the European countries believe that the executable file are protected by copyright. Uh, but at least, if one day it, it should be uh, presented in court, we can argue that uh, it shouldn't uh, be protected because it's not the author's own, uh, own uh, intellectual creation. Nevertheless, the, the, the case law is, is more favorable to executable file. Um, the question is also uh, regarding the wording, if it is original. In France, for instance, the interpretation of the national courts are very extensive. Uh, they want to see in the source code the uh, print of the authors. Uh, but it's not written like that. It's just say it's the author's own intellectual creation. And if you, for instance, have been instructed to code some, something, uh, yes, it should be technical because there is instruction, if, then, uh, otherwise, loop, uh, then, uh, for, uh, every uh, type of, of, of code. And there is a, a kind of logic. Uh, and sometimes uh, the courts believe that the logic prevents the authors to print his personality to the code. Then he say, okay, has it uh, just, uh, r um, you just write some logic that has been provided to you? Uh, it's not your intellectual creation. It just, you have been told to do th that. I do not agree because when you look, for instance, to um, uh, a drawings of Leonardo da Vinci, you have, he probably has been instructed to draw a woman and nonetheless, uh, it's a beautiful woman, and the print is clear. Uh, the print of this creation is, is clear. We all know that if you give two instructions to do two different programmers, uh, the results would be different. The logic will be the same, but the, the results, the, 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 code, the source code will be different. What I say here is, The wording of the, con the Council Directive is not very accurate, or at least it's not very followed by the National Court. Uh, and we should be very careful uh, regarding uh, the interpretation of the National Court of, uh, of this, uh, this wording. Then I cannot say, okay, uh, the French, uh, the French uh, interpretation is like that, uh, the German one is like that, the US uh, is like that because it's, it's not so easy. But uh, at least there is a, a kind of problem here and we should be aware of it uh, before uh, uh, arguing that a computer program is protected by um, copyright. Yes. So in this 
seeming that uh, by customers we object. I agree that some proportion of the code is yours, but the rest of it, the rest of it is not. Could the situation be like this? Uh, every situation can appear, I, be, I believe. Uh, <laughs> Uh, actually, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, I'm a, a law guy, and I know that everything can appear in court. Uh, everything can be uh, supported by arguments. Um, what I want to say is, uh, at the very least, if you have, for instance, instructions uh, of programming a, a certain logic, uh, and you apply this logic to your, 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 your programming, uh, perhaps the person can try to say there is no copyright on this, on this source code. Um, I do not know uh, the uh, case law of every country in the Europe, and then I cannot give a, a broad uh, answer. Uh, but at least uh, the copyright can be challenged. That's all I say. Um, perhaps unsuccessfully, but uh, it could be challenged. Uh, exactly. The question is um, why, um, in in uh, in uh, twenty years ago, uh, we uh, the the uh, the Europe try to give the, this type of protection uh, to, uh, to, uh, to the programmers. As I said to, uh, just two minutes ago, um, we provide uh, to uh, the law guy a piece of code and say, okay, what the type of protection we should provide to this new type of thing, because it was new at the, at the time. They look at the, the code, it's uh, for instance uh, this one, it's uh, one of mine, I, mean, uh, I can reproduce it uh, as I want. And it's a, a piece of code and they say, okay, it's a, a list of uh, characters, uh, there is some words, okay, it, it, it is exactly like a poem. Uh, here it's Hamlet, uh, they say, okay, we do not see any differences between a source code and a poem, then, okay, we will apply the same protection. This is the main idea why we have now a copyright on the source code, even if it's clearly technical. We, it's, it's hard to understand why we arrived at, but the, the main explanation is, is, is that. Once we have um, quickly uh, discussed the uh, copyright uh, protection, we should understand uh, why and how do we, we can uh, protect um, a software by patent. Because we all know that the software patentability is at stake, uh, or at least there is a lot of discussion regarding that. Then there is a main idea here is that software are or should be excluded from patentability. And indeed, if I am fair, in Europe, you, we have um, an article um, 52, paragraph two, that say, um, it's the, 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 the article um, uh, 52 is uh, the exclusion from patentability. Um, the wording is, the following in particular shall not be regarded as invention and should be excluded from patentability. And they say, program from computers and only if it's considered as such only to the extent to which a European patent application or European patent relates to such subject matter as such. Then if we look to this article, we say, okay, it's clear. We couldn't have a patent on a program. It's written. 
But unfortunately, uh, most of the time of my day, I draft patents on software. Uh, and why, why that? Uh, how it can be possible? It's written. Uh, then we should understand what is the meaning of this. Um, and to understand it, I propose to look into um, the uh, prepar preparatory work of the uh, European uh, Patent Convention. Uh, and there is um, a, a, a lot of explanation to uh, this, uh, this wording. Um, just to, 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 to explain this property work, uh, at first they do not want it to add this, uh, this, uh, this exclusion. Uh, and uh, at the end they say, okay, we will see. And they put this exclusion and say, we will see. But in the, uh, in the um, preparatory work, it is written that then it is an opinion that has been discussed during the, the, the conferences. This majority opinion held, on the contrary, that a special subparagraph dealing with a computer program could lead to the conclusion that any program, including true invention, related to such a program should be excluded from patentability. What they say here, they say, okay, perhaps we wanted to had this phrase, uh, this exclusion program, there is an exclusion from program for computers, but we do not want to prevent true invention related to such program to be patentable. We do not want people to patent real invention related to, pa to, to computers. Then we understand here uh, just with this uh, sentence, that they are afraid of the interpretation that the people can make if we had a special paragraph in, in the EPC, European Patent Convention. Another one, <clears throat> they say, there was a danger that the structure or algorithm on which such programs were based will also not be considered as invention. An invention, sorry. Why do they put this exclusion in the EPC? Because clearly here, when we look at this, uh, this sentence, they do not want, they, they want uh, algorithm uh, for program uh, should be considered as an invention. They say, okay, there is a danger that there is a misinterpretation of the EPC, of the first paragraph. As a matter of fact, the exclusion aims the source code. They do not want to patent a source code, but they wanted to patent the algorithm supported by the source code because it's exactly what a patent does. The, does. It doesn't, uh, we do, do not patent um, a specific embodiment. Uh, we do not pr uh, protect um, uh, the way the, the people write the code, but we want to protect the methods, the, the algorithm. Um, then here, uh, they say, okay, there is a danger. Uh, there could be a misinterpretation and at the end of the preparatory work, they say, okay, we will, lead, uh, we will uh, uh, leave uh, the uh, case law uh, of, the, uh, of the EPO, uh, decides what is the correct interpretation of our exclusion. And the, uh, the um, uh, court, uh, the um, appeal court of the uh, EPO decide exactly what I say, that source code are not patentable, but algorithms that are supported by, by uh, software can be. It's broadly what they say, but uh, we will see. 
what I say is there is no possible interpretation of ZPC that prohibits the protection of a method implemented by a computer. Then most of the times we do not protect a software. We, all, we mostly uh, protect a methods implemented by computers. Then the algorithm. Is it clear or? Okay. Nevertheless, not any computer programs or algorithms may be patented. And they say, okay, in order to, to ease the prosecution, they, say they provide some guidelines for examination, and they say, the features which contribute to the technical character of the inventions are determined on the basis of the technical effects achieved in the conduct of the invention. Then we should look in the methods to the technical effect. What is technical in the algorithm? For instance, if I look to um, um, uh, a method for compression, an image compression methods, we, we clearly see it. You know, you, you have an image, uh, there is a reduction uh, of the number of bytes, then okay, it's technical. Uh, everybody agree with that. Um, we, then we should look at the technical effect. Otherwise, if there is no technical effect in the invention, it's just a, a, a kind of non-technical logic, it's not patentable. It's not inventive and sh should be considered as obvious. But the real question is, what is a technical effect? And the real answer to this question is, we, don't know, we do not know. If we ask the PO, what is a technical effect? They say, uh, present me a case and I will tell you if it's technical or not. Uh, yes, but it's, too, it's, it's quite easy. But uh, Then we have to look to the case law. But the real, uh, the real uh, point is uh, when we look to, uh, for instance, a bottle, uh, yes, okay, it's technical because it's hard and we can see it. When we look to um, an algorithm, it's more difficult to understand what is technical or not. Then a list of, of, of uh, items here, and does, does it provide a technical effect? Uh, image processing, Mostly everybody told, uh, say that it's technical, then okay, good. Telecommunication, mostly everybody say, okay, if, if there is a, 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 a telecommunication, we see it and it's, it's patentable. Cryptography, it can be considered as not non-technical on the sides. Uh, it's not always considered as uh, non-technical, but it happens. Um, and it's hard to know how. But uh, there is some situation where it's not considered as an uh, invention. When you simulate, uh, for instance, you simulate a circuit or you simulate uh, um, a subsoil, uh, you want to, to know uh, what is underground and you have some inputs and you try to simulate uh, a ge geological uh, subsoil. Uh, sometimes it's not considered as invention uh, by ZPO because it's not related to concrete things, I believe, mostly. Control of industrial chain, it's, it's okay. It's always uh, considered as uh, patentable because it's, it's related to con concrete words. And uh, data mining in database, uh, mostly, m m uh, mostly it's not considered as invention. If you search data uh, in a database, they often say that it's not patentable because it's, uh, they say, okay, it's just a search. Uh, then you can improve your search, but mostly it's not considered as an invention. Yes, it's, it's quite difficult. I understand that. But it's just the same as the usual inventions that your brain also data mines in the precedents and experiments and finds some solution which did not exist before. 
uh, 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 what do you mean? When you make an invention, yes. inventor, you also possess a lot of knowledge accumulated by humanity. And by yes. Experiment. Yes. Yeah, uh, it depends. If you find an invention through the data mining, uh, it's clearly, it could be an invention. If the invention, if the way you do, does, uh, you do the data mining, because it's the, the point here, uh, mostly it's not considered as invention. It's the way you do the data mining. If you say, okay, I have, um, uh, every um, gigabyte of the, the data, and I try to find the good one very quickly, or the, the good set of the good bunch of, of data very quickly. Um, it's not most of the time considered as invention. It depends on the case, uh, clearly. Yes, uh, I have a very uh, problematic uh, case law in Europe that, for instance, most of the times when it was faster, uh, I considered it as a, a technical effect. We have a, a, a recent uh, case law in Europe that say the speed of a processing is not a technical effect. Uh, and yeah. clearly, it's, it depends. Uh, uh, it, we will see it. Uh, it's very, very different. Uh, it do, it, we do not look at the technical effect of something. It's, it's quite different, yes. <clears throat> uh, then. We want uh, a patent granted on a case, a software case, and how we do it. The first thing is the wording of the claims. The claim is, is the scope of the protection you, you, you wanted. Um, the, the wording of the claims should be very carefully chosen. Then you, if you, you can, choose a, a, an accurate uh, professional to, to draft your claim because this is the most important thing. Everything is about wording. Uh, just a, a small wording, for instance, if you say, I simulate a geological subsoil or I simulate a real geological subsoil. What I meant is the real geological subsoil is uh, a real one, uh, I, I have a, a subsoil and I want this subsoil simulated. For instance, this could, this could help, for instance. Then the wording of the claims is not randomly chosen by the professional and then you, 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 you will to draft your claim very carefully. In addition, arguments are also the key. Um, when you receive your first office action, uh, the ex examiner is always uh, always consider that it's not technical or it's not patentable or there is an issue here, there is an issue here. Uh, you have to convince the examiner with arguments that uh, your claims satisfy the requirements of uh, the law. Then the arguments should be supported by the recent case law. Then you have to be very updated to the knowledge of the case law, uh, which apply to your case, because if you, you choose a US case law in Europe, you will have some difficulties. But uh, you have to know the, the, the up-to-date case law. And finally, uh, and it's really important to know that, there is no miracle formula uh, that say, if you do it, you will have a patent. If you do not, you won't have a patent. Uh, okay, uh, if uh, it would be the case, uh, it would be very trivial to, uh, to, to have a patent on software. 
uh, and I won't be here uh, because it would be a very trivial and you will go uh, search on uh, Google in order to, to have your answer. But uh, the, the, if you want to choose uh, um, uh, an attorney uh, 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 which is uh, very uh, up to date to the, the case law, you have to choose it also because he feel the good way to defend your case. Uh, uh, because, as I say, there is no miracle. There is a gray zone, and we have to navigate into this gray zone uh, if we want to, a patent on, on this type of invention. Yeah, sure. Uh, the case law, the decision, the previous decision of the courts. Um, in U.S., for instance, the case law is essential because uh, the law is based on the case law, uh, on the case laws. Um, in Europe, it's 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 not. Uh, the law is the law, uh, and the case law just provides some ins, some insights on the interpretation of the law. Uh, and then uh, the case law is the previous decision of the courts, uh, which is binding or not, it uh, depends. Uh, and it, does it answer your question? Yeah. 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 Okay, wonderful. <clears throat> In US, it's quite different. Um, the exclusion uh, of patentability on not exactly based on the same uh, article, uh, obviously. In the US, it's based on the uh, paragraph uh, 101, who say that whoever invents or discovers any new and useful process machine manufacture or composition of matter, or any new and useful improvement thereof may obtain a patent, blah, 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 blah. This has been interpreted as there is some ju judicial exceptions and exceptions to patentability, uh, which, which are law of nature, natural ph phenomena, and abstract ideas. And then if most of the times when an examiner wants to reject a patent based on an exclusion from patentability, they say, it's an abstract idea. It's just, for instance, manipulation of data, which can be done with your mind. Then it's an abstract idea, then it should be rejected. <clears throat> In the US, um, as I said, the case law is essential because it's, it's guides uh, the examiner to the decision he made. Then I just draft a very short uh, uh, diagram here. There's a lot of decision here. Um, just uh, I won't go deep into each of, the, uh, of it, but what I, I want to say on this slide is in the AT, uh, it was very easy to have a patent granted on the software. Then it has been more difficult in 2010. Uh, it was horrible in 2014 with the decision, the, the, if you heard the decision now, it's uh, the decision Alice. Alice Corp uh, versus CLS Bank uh, International. Uh, named Decision Alice. Uh, and the Decision Alice say, uh, okay, uh, uh, nothing is patentable uh, if it's related to software, basically. Uh, basically, uh, if you have a software, you cannot have, an, have a patent. And it's a decision of uh, the Supreme Court. Uh, then it's uh, I ranked in, in the uh, decision. Nevertheless, uh, we have a bunch of decision in uh, in uh, in uh, two, uh, 2016, uh, September and November, if I remember well, 
uh, which, is, uh, which are a decision of the uh, feder uh, federal circuits. Uh, they, this decision has interpreted Alice, and they say, okay, we first understood from Alice that everything should be excluded from patentability, but we misinterpreted the, the decision Alice, and actually there is some possibility that you can have a granted patent. Then, uh, we are, as you say, it's a wave. Uh, sometimes it's very easy to have a patent granted. Sometimes it's very hard. Uh, but it begins to, to be more easy these days. If I can say that, because uh, we always have some difficulties, but uh, but it should be easier in in the few years. Uh, if you cannot have a patent because it's in the lower uh, part of the wave, uh, just wait five years, and you will have a patent on the same invention because the court will allow it. And then it's. Uh, in, in, in the US, it's uh, more, uh, more easy um, than the, um, than the um, in Europe. In Europe, it's more, the, the type of decision are more, more, more stable. Do you have any questions regarding the uh, US parts or, no, this is okay? Um, I'd like to, 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 to finish my, my presentation with um, the uh, open source license because we all always uh, see the, uh, the open source license uh, as contradictory regarding the patentability of the software. And obviously most of the people who make uh, open source license are against patentability and, uh, and vice versa. Uh, I do not agree with that, and I would like to, to share you, you um, uh, my, my opinion. Um, what is this, an, an open source software? Okay, most of the time the source code is open because it's an open source, yes, obviously. And it's uh, available to the general public uh, for use and or modification. Okay. It is considered as uh, encouraging the innovation and the co-innovation. For instance, uh, we know that uh, there is a um, uh, MySQL database, which uh, has been formerly fully uh, opened. Now it's uh, quite, uh, quite different, but uh, mostly it's open. Um, Mozilla uh, Foundation which provide a lot of bunch of uh, open source software. Open Office, obviously, Linux, uh, and there is a, a bunch, uh, a number of open source uh, uh, software, uh, very, very, very great. But the user should follow the license requirements. And the fact that it's open source, it doesn't mean that there is no IP rights. And it's exactly the opposite. If there is no IP rights, if for instance you write a, a piece of code without copyright, uh, there is no way to force the user to respect the, the license, obviously. The license is, I give you the opportunity to modify my, 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 uh, my source code, but you have, for instance, the obligation, the obligation to uh, put your modification into the, uh, the open source domain. Why you can force the other party to do something? If you can force the other party to do something, it's only because you have the copyrights. If it doesn't follow the license, you can sue him in court 
with the copyrights and say, okay, you are in, infringe my copyrights because, uh, because you do not follow the license, then I can sue you. If you do not have the copyrights, there is no way to sue some, someone in court. There is no way. Then you have to, 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 uh, to have the copyrights. Then the open source license are based on the IP, IP rights. And that's what I want to say. It's very important uh, because most of the times people uh, lost uh, uh, these points uh, of the mine. And for instance, in GPL uh, version 3, the patent rights are expli explicitly mentioned. They say, each contributor grants you a non-exclusive, worldwide, royalty-free patent license under the contributor's essential patent claims to make, use, sell, offer to, for sale, import, or otherwise run, modify, or propagate the content of its contributor version. Then, the GPL uh, uh, version 3 also provides supports the license by uh, license on the patents. If there is no patents and no copyright, because you, it's both here, uh, you cannot have an open source license. There is some drawback here uh, I want to, to explain. For instance, if as a programmer you include an open source license, a GPL uh, version 3, if you include uh, an open source, li uh, source code into uh, your, your, your main uh, program, the whole program will become open source because it's uh, some disposition of the GPL vers uh, version 3. Not all the open source license provides this obligation, but uh, the GPL ver version 3 uh, has this obligation. And also, if you have some patents, you cannot enforce it anymore. Why? Because if you had some uh, some source open source uh, code in your uh, your 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 uh, program you became you became a contributor contributor here and each contributor grants you an exclusive worldwide royalty free patent license then if you became a contributor then you grant everyone a patent uh, a free license on your patent, then you have some patents, but you cannot enforce it. Uh, then it's it's uh, it's important to know. Uh, mostly, if you have a, a large portfolio of patents, uh, this can be very tricky to to avoid. Okay, um, I will finish my my uh, presentation with one real life example in Europe, uh, it's regarding the technical effects. Uh, I would like to finish with that because it's more concrete and, and can be uh, interesting for you. Um, is it big enough or do you see it? Okay, I assume that uh, you, you can see it. I will explain. Um, the idea here is I want to support my assertion that arguments are the key. In this uh, invention, um, the invention is uh, you, for instance, you browse, you, you browse um, oh sorry, uh, you browse a web page, um, a very large web page, uh, and um, you uh, have a mobile terminal. Then you can only display uh, this part of the screen because you cannot have the, the large part because it's, the display is not adapted to, do, to, to you. And uh, we know that uh, you are used to go in the shopping zone. Here, there is a shopping zone. Outside, 
the display of your mobile terminal, uh, and uh, there is a, a shopping zone. And then in order to avoid uh, scrolling uh, up, down, left, right, uh, in order to look, to search this shopping zone, uh, the invention was to provide an arrow, an arrow here. Uh, when there is a, a, a specific zone you want to, you use to, to use, uh, they should just show in, in the display zone an arrow with the direction of the shopping. Then it's easier to, to go to the, uh, the, uh, this, uh, this part. This was the invention. It's not a big deal, I understand that, but it's, uh, just, it's just to support my point. The first argument that has been provided in this case is these arrows uh, improve the user experience. The answer of the examiner is the user experience of the, of the user is abstract, not technical, and uh, just easing uh, the scrolling is not an invention. Okay. Then we change our set of arguments and we say it's limit the use of the battery. Because if you scroll less, because you go directly on the good direction, you could scroll less, and then the use of the battery is, is limited. And this you say, okay, it's technical. Uh, then I allow the fact that these features should be considered. You see that uh, with a small change of arguments, the set of claims was exactly the same. We did not, do not change the set of claims. Uh, but we just change the argumentation. And by changing the argumentation, we, uh, we, we uh, improve the position of the clients uh, on, on, this, on this type of invention. Here is the end of the uh, presentation. Uh, do you have any questions uh, regarding uh, any points, any uh, hot points you want to raise uh, regarding patentability of software or so else? Yes. I do have a question, actually. Uh, in the beginning, you mentioned that I believe it was under the European, uh, European copyright that uh, the author's intellectual creation uh, is one of the conditions for, uh, for grant copyright and that it could be a potential problem for, uh, let's say, the compiled binary. Yes. Uh, yeah, okay, I understand that. Um, the copyrights, uh, the copyrights, the normal copyrights, the standard one does not apply to the book, but applies to the text. Uh, then we do not see any problems here because uh, as it applies to the text, uh, the text is the same, it has not been changed, uh, and then the reasoning is, is quite easy. Uh, here, um, it's like uh, if, because when you look at the, the binary, uh, the text has been modified. Yeah. Then we, we could argue that as it has been modified by a computer, it's not uh, the author's uh, uh, works. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, but. I don't, I don't believe that it applies to standard uh, copyrights. Any other question? You also mentioned the point about the author's individuality being imprinted with his works. Yes. What if, in case of the software, there are usually project or corporate uh, standards on the Hmm. Yeah, uh, it's a really good question. Uh, I have no clue uh, how national 
because I truly believe that um, when we look at um, programs uh, which has been developed uh, by a number of people, uh, there is some specific disposition in the national law which explain how to deal with the copyrights. Uh, because I know, for instance, that in, in France, that the rights, the copyright, is not granted to the inventors, but to uh, combine uh, to the employer because it's uh, considered as a combined work, something like that. Because the employer paid for it. Sorry? Essentially because the employer paid for it. Uh, it's not the, the good answer because, uh, uh, for instance, since normal copyrights, uh, if you pay someone to uh, uh, draw a picture or write a book, the copyrights is owned by, by the, the authors. There is some specific disposition for the, the, for the, the, uh, the software because it's, it's technical and then it's not considered as the same. Uh, I, I speak on the French law because I know the French law. I not, do not know every law, but uh, uh, the fact that you pay something doesn't doesn't imply that you, you, the copyright is moved. Uh, the copyright is something due to the creation, not due to the payment. Then uh, the separation of uh, authorship and the ubiquity of intellectual property. Rights. Sure, uh, I'm not very very. Um, we are sure to, to correctly answer to, to this question broadly, I mean. Uh, but there is some trick thing uh, regarding the payment and uh, the ownership. You had some question. Uh, very good question. Um, <laughs> mostly, from my point of view, uh, the Asian system is mainly based in Europe, European system. Uh, for instance, China system is very close to the European system. There are the same exclusion, uh, the same wording of the uh, of the uh, article. Then um, it's very very close. Um, um, the American system is used by uh, Canada, um, Australia, uh, some, some country like that have the same interpretation. Uh, uh, but uh, mostly it's uh, former UK states. Uh, uh, but in Asia, mostly uh, it's based on the European system. Uh, I, they probably have some specific disposition, but uh, if we have to, to say that these two systems are very close, yes, China and the European system are very close. But probably not based on, but very close. Uh, no, 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 I include India uh, from that. I'm not very, uh, it's very, very specific in here. In addition, you, you have some country uh, that fully examine patents and you have some country who just have a look to patents. Then. When you look to the US, the Europe, the China, they, they look deep into your patents in order to, to grant you something. Um, in some other countries, it's more easy to, to have a patent because they just have a glance to, to your patents and just say, okay, uh, it has been granted in another country, okay, yes, okay, I grant you a patent. Um, then. Even if the system is, is, uh, is written in the law, 
uh, we do not experience the system because they just say, okay, it's granted or not. Uh, uh, we do not have multiple uh, office action uh, exchange with the examiner. Then I know, uh, I do know best Europe, US, China, the, the, the country who go deep into the examination because we have a lot of exchange with the, uh, the examiners. Probably, I, I'm not sure to, to answer your, to your answer, to your, uh, okay. A preliminary patent or uh, a provision, provision, provisional, provisional patent? Um, a provisional patent is uh, a US invention. Uh, uh, at first, I, I believe uh, it's a kind of um, patent uh, which is uh, quickly drafted, and there is no examination. There is no examination, but you have a date. You have a, a date uh, of your invention, but it's not examined. Then you won't have uh, a patent on a provisional application because it's a provisional application. Yes. And it's an application, not a patent. Um, then you won't have a, a patent on that. If you want a patent, you will file a second one, which is uh, which is uh, claim, claiming the priority of the, the first one. Mm -hmm. Just say, okay, uh, I get the same date. Is it cheaper to, to submit the uh, It's quite expensive, actually. Uh, as a matter of fact, now, due to uh, low modification in Europe uh, and in most of the countries, uh, I won't recommend uh, filing a provisional patent in the US. Uh, you can do exactly to have this, exactly the same effects uh, by filing a, uh, an application in Europe but without paying any fees. You ju just pay no fees and you have the same effect. And uh, form, um, factually, you will ha have a provisional patent in the US by paying some money and you will have a provisional application in Europe by paying nothing. No, no, no. Um, if you pay nothing, uh, you, your patent will be dismissed in Europe, but you will have a date. And you can claim a priority on this date. Yes, sure, sure, but you will have to, to pay. Uh, you, the system is exactly the same, but when you file uh, a patent, you have a date, okay? and. No matter what happens uh, next, you have 12, 12 months to file a second one in other countries or the same country, claiming the priority of the first one. It's just in order to avoid some prior art or something like that. If there is a prior art here, for instance, uh, a document, uh, a relevant document here, uh, you have no problem because your date is here. This, this disclosure is not uh, relevant for you. But it's very uh, prosecution uh, tricks, I believe. But what I want to say is the usual way uh, to have a provisional patent in the US was to file something here in the US. Now, but you have to pay something. Uh, now you can do exactly the same in Europe, but you pay nothing. It's, but patent pending is just an application. Patent pending and an application is exactly the same. And when will the laws change like this? Um, I don't know. Um, no, I do not have the exact time, but at least 10, 10 years ago. There is, a, there is a, a second effect 
which is also technical, which is due to a modification of the US law, which happens in two, uh, 2008. Then in 2008, the effect was exactly the same. But before, there is a little modification. There is a, it was not exactly the same, but but it's, it's very the precision trick is here. It's uh, perhaps not really relevant to our uh, points, but uh, presentation. But uh, but just to know uh, the provision pattern is is um, something like that. Provisional application. Ah, sorry. Um, the, the, the law of nature, uh, I, I believe, uh, it's, it's, uh, it, it aims the exclusion of patentability of discovery, of uh, mathematical formula, of physical concepts. You cannot patent the sun. Okay, for instance, you cannot patent um, the, um, uh, the formation of clouds uh, because it's just, even if you can explain it, you cannot patent it because it's just inherent to our nature. It's the law of nature. It's the law of how everything works. And you cannot patent uh, something who exists. It's exactly what it means. We have the same exclusion in Europe uh, when we say uh, the mathematical formula are excluded from patentability, the discovery is excluded from patentability, um, well, something like that. We arrive at the same point, uh, the same objects are excluded from patentability, but the wording are not the same, it's, it's just that. Yes? Um, just to be sure, we will take the slides. Yes. I assume that it can ha happen, yes. I assume that it can happen, that you have plurality of interpretation. Um, yeah. I have no concrete example in mind because it's not exactly my field of expertise, but uh, I'm truly believe that we can find an example where uh, French courts say yes and uh, German courts say no. I'm pretty sure. If one of the courts say yes, then every other country has to specify um, we we'll, I'm not sure because we have to look in the Bern Convention if there is a um, 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 this an article who provide this, this type of thing, but I believe no. I believe that there is no, dis we have to look into it because I'm not, uh, as I said, it's not my field of expertise. And I, honestly, I didn't read the Bern Convention, sorry for that. Uh, but uh, uh, I do not believe that there is a um, recognition of uh, court authority uh, 
all over the, all over the world. So I believe it's not working like that. Perhaps someone or more qualified than me in in copyright here. No, no one wants to to try. Okay. Okay, um, in, in this type of, uh, of um, conflict between Apple and Samsung, first I want to mention that most of the times people misunderstood what was at stake. We always uh, speak about patents, and mostly it could be true, but for instance, uh, there was a... Um, a um, um, uh, an action regarding the, um, the angle of the, the phone. Uh, the fact that, that there is a round-shaped uh, uh, phone. It was a patent design. And everyone, in, in, they say, okay, it's a patent. Uh, I actually know it's a patent design. And a patent design in U.S., it's a design in our countries, then it's not a patent, uh, then it's not the same law. But in the US, it's the same law which deal with patents and patent design. Then normally the patent design is only aims at uh, design of projects. And we can have a real discussion regarding the design of, of projects, but First, uh, my first uh, remarks here is when the media say, uh, oh, there is a patent, uh, not always. Uh, sometimes it's only a, um, 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 a design. After that, um, they had to, uh, for instance, they has a patent on the slide to unlock. Uh, you know that. you. you you can unlock your phone with a, a slide, uh, which is not the case anymore in the iPhone uh, system, but anyway. Uh, has, as far as I, am, I know, uh, this patent was, uh, was uh, cancelled, uh, uh, has been uh, considered as invalid uh, in a, before court. Um, you have to understand that uh, when a patent is granted, uh, you, there is a kind of uh, framework to, to, to check if a patent is granted, can be granted. Sometimes it happens. Um, the framework is not really followed. Uh, some prior document has not been seen. Um, then the, the patent is considered as uh, valid, as, but it's not. Uh, I know that uh, before courts in France, uh, one third of patents are considered valid. One third. One other third is considered valid, but should be modified. And one third are just rejected are just uh, considered invalid. Uh, it's approximately that. Um, you have to, to, to assume that the examination try to uh, limit the number of invalid patents in the run, uh, in the nature, uh, but uh, it's, not, uh, uh, it's not always perfect, and you can have a granted patent, but should be considered invalid. Then yes, sometimes we see some patents that are not very, very inventive, and uh, but uh, we have to prove it uh, anyway, uh, and we have to follow the framework. It was not really supported by the application. Uh, 
but what I, I say that it's, it's a side effect uh, which is clearly understandable uh, by the person killing the art. But clearly it was not supported directly in the application. Uh, but but uh, there is no uh, obligation that the technical effect was is in the application. But it's it's better if it is. Uh, clearly, it's better if it is. The what? The No, there is no border because it's a gray zone. You have to provide the best convincing arguments and you have to, 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 to convince and the conviction is not black and white. It's something more gray. And uh, that's why I say uh, uh, you navigate in the gray zone with arguments and your arguments could be great too, uh, and you try to, to put the best arguments uh, on your side. But you win a case on um, before court or be, before uh, an office. Uh, you win a, a case uh, uh, with arguments. Uh, you win a case on a very sharp line, uh, but sometimes you win, uh, or sometimes you lose it, but you believe that you you should have win, but, uh, but yes, yeah. There is no um, straight answer to this question. There is no, okay, there is no limit here. Uh, as uh, there is no limit to the technical effects. What is technical? I don't know. Uh, we see that it's, it's quite complex to navigate. Yeah, <laughs> yes, I will uh, broad these arguments uh, before the EPO uh, last time and uh, next time. But uh, yes, yes, I'm very surprised regarding this uh, uh, latest uh, case law. Uh, we will see what uh, will be the next uh, case law in the future. But um, I believe they are wrong, uh, I truly believe. But, uh, Otherwise, they give me a clear explanation of what is the technical effect and uh, end of the game. But uh, here it is. No more questions. Okay, thanks uh, a lot for your time. Thank you.